country, I kind of heard a few statements where they alluded that government dropped the ball or were behind the eight ball. And I wanted to clarify that to a certain extent because in order for this to happen, for, for us to reach to this point, there's a lot of preparatory work that had to be done. Um, establishing the committee was one. They had to do their due diligence and come to the council and say, hey, these are the options that C. Martin has. There were four options that were presented at the time, and we had to go with the best one. We also had to take Telem into consideration as well. And beside that, we also had to go through the due diligence of the Corporate Governance Council, BTP's advice as well, SRV, Tax Department, the Council of Advice, and most importantly, we came to Parliament for your sentiments as well. Those have all been taken into consideration in getting us to this point, and I'd like to thank everyone for their cooperation. Um, as I stated in the first round, I wanted to get guarantees. I heard your explanation, MP Bryson, to you, Madam Chair, in regards to the budget amendments and so, but just now the Minister of Finance stood up and he said it was already mentioned where they would want. But I actually wanted to hear it from the government side. Why I say this? Um, a senior politician sent me a list a couple weeks ago on um, words that government use, politicians use to confuse and mix and match. I'll give two examples. Job losses, job restructuring, unemployed, economically inactive. Hence the reason I just want a clear-cut guarantee, and I told the Minister of Finance this um, during the budget debate as well, I cannot vote based on a promise. I would like, in this case today, I know you can't come with an amendment now or anything like that, but I would like to you, Madam Chair, to the Minister of Finance, at least give me your word here on the floor of Parliament, on the record, that you will do, I want a guarantee that some of the funds will be allocated to the law enforcement office. That's all I want. However the Minister of Finance decides to do it, that's all I want. <clears throat> Why I say this? Remember years ago, um, there was a situation with the Pelican workers, the mass job loss, and I'll just read a, a, a few lines from an article from then. The workers went to Simpson Bay Resort early Thursday morning after they read the news report stating that the company is willing to hire some 92 of the members as early as Thursday. The distraught workers who were without salaries since early December thought their employers would have had them return to their duties on Thursday, but when they showed up at the resort, they were all given an application to fill in again. Now, through you, Madam Chair, we all have families, we all have friends, we are representatives of the people, whether in the legislative branch or the executive branch, and if someone told you today that next week or next month your salary wouldn't be guaranteed, we would all have a problem and a concern. So imagine persons that cannot afford to do such. Madam Chair, over the last years, we saw the situation with the Maho workers, the Pelican workers, the RBC workers, the post office workers, the budget marine workers, the AFU workers, the DV workers, the cable TV workers, Scotia Bank, and now we're on the verge of securing the UTS workers. Now, these are 55 workers with 55 families, however you want to mix and match it. We are not playing a game here, and for me to vote, my conscience, all I need is some guarantees. Because I remember Telem saying when they were here representing um, in terms of um, a sale and so forth, they said that the reason they bought cable TV is to avoid a multinational from coming in and squeezing them. And my response was then, but isn't that going to happen with UTS? Okay, we're here now. But I just want some guarantees because down the line is going to be the UTS workers and then it's going to be the Telem workers and then we're back to square one with mass dismissals. I just want guarantees. I don't know if that's too much to ask. In my opinion, not. But I want some specific points from the from the government in this case as to how they plan to deal with it. Chair Lady, you know what is unfair? What is unfair, Madam Chair, is that we as members of parliament should understand the position and the situation that government is in. We should understand that it's a deficit budget. Madam Chair Lady, I remember clearly, 
clearly. And in my del deliberation, Madam Chair, it was for me to come here that day and sprue and rip the Minister of Finance apart, Madam Chair. Dig up everything possible that there was and tear him down. That was in my deliberation on that day, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, please, I remember you saying, MP, don't go that route. Don't bring up names. Don't do this. Don't do that. And with respect, Madam Chair, I said, yes, I agree. Madam Chair, I could have said, look, listen, this is what it is. It's part of my presentation, and that's how I'm going to go about it. But I understood what was at it at that time. I understood the severity of the situation at that time. Madam Chair, all we are asking, I heard the Minister of Finance a while ago, Madam Chair. I heard the Minister of Justice, and nothing is clear. All we are asking, all I want to hear, yes, monies will be allocated to the justice. That's all. No, you did not say that, Minister of Finance. You said it was mentioned, Madam Chair. He said it was mentioned. No, today, that's all I want to hear. That's all. We spoke about it. We fought about it. Madam Chair, for crying out loud, the budget was pulled back for three weeks to make the amendment for the Dutch police officers, Madam Chair. Here we are today. All, all that, I don't want much. I don't want much. All I want to hear is that yes, even if the minister say there's a great possibility that funds will be allocated in that direction, I am sold, Madam Chair. But I just listened to the Minister of Justice, and again, that's how the Minister of Justice answers it. It's vague, nothing concrete. Even if the Minister of Justice say, this is where we are with the Fungsi book. This is where we are with our appointments. This is where we are with the scales. When all these things come in place, the money is reserved. And yes, things will get done. That's, that, that's, that's all. Madam Chair, please. Please, Madam Chair. Maybe they will listen to your word. Because we are ir irrelevant. And it doesn't matter what we say. Madam Chair, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I would like to hear something concrete from the Minister of Justice and from the Minister of Finance that monies will be reserved, particularly for justice. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Megawati is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. 
Save some green with NVGEBE. The evaluation of the CFT motion unanimously approved in Parliament. As anti-poverty platform, we have been advocating to change the terms of reference of the CFT so that their advices and proposals will respect the human rights of the people of St. Martin. In Parliament, on several occasions, we have illustrated how the CFT is strangling St. Martin people. We advocated for a Right to Development Supervisory Committee, which has to advise the St. Martin government and the Kingdom government on the implementation of all human rights on an equal footing in the Kingdom. Consequently, the budget of St. Martin becomes a development budget, which then can never be a meatless skeleton budget. Why we say so? Well, given the fact that already in 1979 the Kingdom has ratified the International Covenants on Civil and Political Rights and Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, the human rights deficit, which we have denounced as geopolitical discrimination in the Kingdom, has to be eliminated with all means possible in the Kingdom to provide equal rights to all citizens in the state, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and so also to St. Martin residents. Now that the International Monetary Fund has made some critical remarks about the CFT proposals regarding the financial recovery of the budget of Curacao, only now UDMP Sarah Westcott Williams presented a motion to call upon Parliament and government to evaluate the CFT. The motion was unanimously approved by all 15 members of Parliament at the end of Tuesday evening's budget meeting. The motion calls for Parliament and Government to analyze statements and comments from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, regarding Curacao and its financial management, and based on this to evaluate and or re-evaluate the Committee for Financial Supervision CFT structure and modus operandi and or its independent functioning. The motion also called for parties to start discussion about removing this kind of stifling financial supervision and termination of the Rijkswet financial toezicht to be replaced by an improved St. Martin's financial oversight system and budgetary control. We will seek an audience with the governor as representative of the Kingdom Government, with the Council of Ministers and with Parliament to once more provide them with the information and arguments to change the Rijkswet Financiële Toezicht in such a way, in such a manner that the right to development of the people of St. Martin can be realized on an equal footing in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. If all politicians of coalition and opposition can unite on this right to development to be implemented, that will no longer keep the people in poverty. But the eradication of poverty will be the result of the equal treatment and realization of all human rights for all citizens in the kingdom, regardless where we live in the kingdom.
Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds. And I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Bib now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices, the Winwood Islands Bank, now your online banking partner. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina, and I play football with the Walichi Roma soccer team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy, and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in? How common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One. Get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two. Stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look up for the one in terms of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two, three, four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Curaçao was the first country in the world to have an uprising, 1795. And they were defeating the Dutch, like he said. But the French came in. And the French is the one that helped the Dutch capture Tula and Katpata. And the French is the one that chopped them up. The same as they did with Patrice Lumumba in the Congo. 
in 1961. Now, we are talking about reparation, which is the first country in the world that received reparation. It was the so-called Jews in Israel. They are the first one to receive reparation from Germany. And up until today, right now, they are receiving $4 billion annually from the United States to keep their economy going. Also, at the museum of, uh, in Washington, they are receiving $241 million a year to keep their museum going. We, the Dutch people in St. Martin, the Netherlands, the former Netherlands Antilles, will not be given reparation from the Dutch. They will not apologize to us because we don't have no chair, no representation at the United Nations. When we get a chair next to the Dutchman, so that the entire world can hear our grievance, then and only then will the Dutchman listen to us. Because right now, in his eyes and in his ears, we are still niggers, boss naked. We are still that. They devalue everything, everyone who is black. They see us as when you read the French and Dutch treaty, they said that we were goods two-fifths of a human being. Adolf Hitler killed millions of them because the Jews wanted to be black. They came from us, according to Mendel, their great anthropologist, and their great scientist, whose name is Professor Leakey. He said, White people are recessive. Black people are dominant. So when I listened to you just now, and you said, colored people, we are not colored. We are black. You take a white man, you put him in the sun, he turns red. You beat the hell out of him, he turns blue. You fight in him, he turns white. Who's colored? I take him, I put him in the sun, he stay black. He doesn't change. They call us niggers because it's a world of saying one is less fortunate than the other. So we are niggers. But in the book by Will Durant, The Destruction of African Civilization, Will Durant is explaining to you that in Great Britain, a nigger was a white carpenter, a white plumber, a white painter, a white gardener, because he was less fortunate than the dentist, the doctor, the professor. All of that is good and well. But they put that name on us because of the Dutch. Now, I also would agree with you. There's a book called Great Britain's Debt to the Caribbean by Hilary Beckles, a professor, a scholar, a brilliant man at the University of the West Indies in Barbados. And in his book, he's talking about reparation. And he's naming all the former British colonies that are independent. And he's saying that they the slave owners of those countries. He even mentioned in Angola the names of the slave owners and they were given reparation money. We are not going to get it. Right now you have Dr. Ralph Gonzalez from St. Vincent. He is trying to get all the Caricom Islands together to go and fight because 
they have a seat at the United Nations. So when they talk, everybody would listen. We don't have it. Our representation at the United Nations is the Dutchman. Nobody is going to listen to us. Nobody at all. Because we don't have somebody to represent us at the United Nations. In order for that to happen, we must go for independence. Then we are equal like the Dutchman. We have the same one vote like him. But as long as we stay and we look to try to get reparation, the gentleman that you mentioned who is over all of that fanciness, he's right. Don't worry with them. They don't know what they're talking because we have nobody to represent us.